Hey, Banana Brain, this is Brendan Walsh, and you've somehow managed to be involved with this showbizmonkeys.com situation somehow. Around this town, I'm alright. Around this town, I'm alright. I mean, no consequence when you're playing with the fire. Okay, so I'd like to start off by just asking you about where your career has come over the last 10 years. You've been doing comedy since, I think, uh, 2002 or so. Yeah. Um, what first prompted you to get on stage? Were you always a big comedy fan? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was a comedy fan growing up. Um, I think the first thing that prompted me to get on stage was probably free beer. <laughs> uh, that's how you get paid for a lot of comedy shows still to this day. You uh-huh. get paid in drink tickets. And, you know, and then it's just been one long, uh, slippery slope into an alcohol problem over the last decade. <laughs> right. Did you have a show, uh, during that process where after it was done, or maybe even during it while you were on stage, you realized, okay, I've made it as a comic, this is my thing? I don't know. I don't, there was never, there, I don't, there's no real, like, cathartic moment that I recall being on stage except for one time when I was like basically getting booed off stage and people were throwing stuff at me uh, <laughs> and then at that time I realized I was like oh this is going to be that story that I remember forever of the worst time on stage but uh no I don't know I think it's just kind of a gradual thing like I still I don't think I I don't think I stand up there I don't feel like I've made it yet so far I mean I, I still feel like I'm just uh just getting started well, I mean, you, you've worked with some great people over the years, which I think to me would indicate that you've certainly made it in some way. I, I know you've, you spent a lot of time working on the road and touring with uh, Doug Stanhope. Yeah. He's, he's a unique character. There's lots of stories about him out there, um, but he's also a great comic. How's your relationship with him been, both as someone working with him and as a comedy fan yourself? Um, well, Doug was one... We worked together pretty early on. I think I'd been doing comedy for maybe two years. Okay. And uh, I wound up opening for him. And, you know, he thought I was funny, and we hit it off. And, frankly, uh, I wasn't really... When I started doing comedy, I wasn't really too well-versed in contemporary comedy as far as, like, you know, like, I hadn't... And not to sound disrespectful to Doug, but uh, I, I didn't know who he was when we first started working together. Because right. I wasn't... A, you know, a big fan or anything. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm a huge fan now and and became a fan pretty quickly. But I wasn't, uh, it's not like, you know, I had a stack of his CDs in my car and was, uh, you know, all, all nervous to uh, to work with the guy, which, which you know, probably helped, uh, probably why we had such a good relationship right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I mean, as far as all that goes, yeah, I have worked with, some really great people and I am honored uh, I, I do take a moment like I do appreciate it there are moments where I'm like this is pretty cool like you know 15 years ago or whatever before like or just when I first started comedy I'd be like oh this would be pretty neat you know this is pretty neat that I'm working with these people and I am you know I definitely do feel as far as um, making it I do feel accepted in the comedy community and I do feel like uh, I do have a a certain amount of respect from my peers and I guess that's all you can really ask for and that and you know millions of dollars but <laughs> right. if you don't get the millions at least everybody will you know when your name comes up they go oh yeah he's a funny guy I like him oh both would be nice yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you see anybody uh, in the comedy world whose career you kind of look up to not even necessarily their their jokes but just the way they've gone about progressing well, I mean, Doug is a, Doug's a pretty good example of that, Stanhope. I mean, he he's a guy who, you know, has had his controversies and, and stuff over the years and his problems with different clubs. And then he really, he's really carved out his own place, his own little trail there as far as, uh, you know, getting away from the clubs and just working these alternative venues and uh, just kind of making his own way. And things are going pretty well for him now, but it wasn't wasn't a quick transition. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was working with him when he was just, he started booking things just through MySpace and, uh, and stopped working clubs. And we would just, you know, we'd go on these like three week long road trip tours, like different city every night. And, uh, just working like little bars and stuff, you know, getting maybe 50, 75 people out to the bars. And he's built that up to where I think he's working, 
probably averaged like, you know, like 500 seat places. So that's, uh, I mean, not anybody who does anything uh, outside the box, not to sound like some douchey, you know, Los Angeles term or something, but like, you know, what Louis C.K. is doing with the, you know, with selling his tickets all through his site and just that $5, uh, it's five dollars special straight through a site that everybody's you know, copying now. I think Gaffigan and Aziz are both doing the same thing. Yeah, I, that that kind of stuff is is very admirable. Um, just to see somebody take chances like that and and have the guts to just you know say screw this, I don't like playing this game because there's a lot of you know there's a lot of garbage you got to deal with. Like the the further you get into this profession like most of us just got into it because we like having fun and goofing around and telling jokes like you know the art form is very important but then the, the more you uh the further you get into it it's just like there's more nonsense that goes along with it like businessy type stuff and agents and managers and this and that and uh and I, I really, I really admire that uh from Louis that he's just like I don't want to deal with any of that crap anymore I'll just you know you want to see me? You want to buy? You want to see me on video? Here, just put five dollars in my PayPal account, and and you can see it. If you want to come see me at a show? Here's how you get tickets. Just come to my website and buy tickets. Like, there's no eliminating all of the unnecessary middlemen and showbiz nonsense is uh, is pretty cool to me. And Doug doing the same thing, you know, both yeah. on the more on the live performance end of it. Definitely. Um, well, one one thing over the last few years that has crept up that I guess is mostly outside of the industry part of comedy is is the the rise of comedy podcasts yeah you, you've appeared on plenty over the years and you have your own as well what role do you think podcasting has played in growing comedy over the last few years it's done wonders for comedy i actually i i'm in i'm actually on the road right now i'm working in indianapolis this week and um I have, there's been, it's, it's great. I mean, for me personally, it is such a good feeling to have people specifically like coming to the shows to see you because they know you from, a, from your podcast. I mean, that's, that's a new thing to me. You know, I just, the podcast is fairly new. I think we've only done like maybe 30, 28 episodes or something. Um, and over the last few months, there's been, I've been noticing a difference, you know, people coming to the shows and they're like big fans of the podcast. And, uh, and it's, I think it's great because a lot of these people, that's, that's the thing. I have these people who are coming that are like big fans of mine, but they've never seen or heard my stand up comedy. <laughs> they just know me as a guy on a podcast. But I think that's better than, you know, somebody just, I mean, obviously it's good to get, you know, you want to build a fan base. You need that to, to, uh, to survive, but uh, but I think that the podcast thing is 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 better because yeah, you can just listen to the album of like you know all the guys jokes, but with the podcast, it's like they really kind of get to know you, you know, like they they get to know what you're like and you're you know they could tell you're a funny guy or or what you're like just from uh, listening to your podcast. So it's it's kind of a cool thing to have people come out who are fans of you but not familiar with your comedy. So it's like they, you know, it's, it's just just makes for a whole better show and a neat experience because, uh, you know, they already know they already know what you're about. So they're like, we've already signed up. So you, you know, it'd be pretty hard to not have a good show in front of those people who are already a fan of you as a person. Yeah, but they're also coming to your comedy from a fresh place, which is unique too. It's great, man. I mean, it's and I'm sure. Uh, everybody you've talked to that has a podcast has, has said the same thing. I mean, it's a, it's such an amazing tool. It's, it's great. It's, yeah, it's great. I mean, it really, it's helped so many careers. And well, I mean, Mark Marin, it's a perfect example. I mean, that guy was having a pretty rough time and, uh, stepped into his garage and plugged the microphone into his computer and, and the guy's never been doing better. I mean, you know, he's selling out shows. His podcast is huge. It's a real, you know, again, not to use another douchey L.A. term, but it's a real game changer. Uh -huh. <laughs> you heard that before? Yeah, yeah. Game changer. <laughs> <laughs> well, to get a little bit into, I guess, the Hollywood side, you've done a little bit of writing for television. Is that something you want to try and do more of? Do you have anything in the pipeline right now? Yeah, we have a few things um, that we are developing. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I would love to 
you know, get a show on the air. Right now, there's, yeah, there are a few things that we're working on, and that would be great. I would love to have my own TV show. As far as just, like, getting staffed, like, writing for a show, that's not super appealing to me. Mm-hmm. But um, but I have a lot of friends who do it, and, and, you know, the more I'm seeing people get jobs, like, writing for sitcoms, it doesn't seem like that bad of a deal, you know? It seems like a pretty fun job, and you can make a really good living doing that. But ultimately, you know, I'd like to, to get my own show on the air and just get my stupid face on TV enough to get <laughs> more people to buy tickets to Carcini Live. I mean, that's really, everything that I do is, is pretty much motivated by, by the stand-up comedy. You know, everything I do, I want it to feed into to help the stand-up. So, yeah. you know, ultimately when all is said and done, you know, you can burn whatever bridges in Hollywood or, you know, have a flop TV, you know, have your TV show or writing job in. But if you build up enough of a fan base where you can go to uh, 25, 30 cities a year for a weekend and get a, a handful of people to come out to see you and, and pay money, then, then you know, that's all you need. You can have you can have a comfortable life and yeah. you don't really have to deal with too much crap. You just have to go, you know, traveling. That's the only downside to the comedy. But, uh flying around all the time. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. you. Well, you've done uh, a few things at uh, Just for Laughs over the years, transitioning to, the, I guess, the reason for this interview. You started with the New Faces show, and then a couple of years ago you did uh, Funny as Hell. Are you looking forward to going back to Montreal? Yeah, totally. Of course, it's a big party. It's fun. It's all great people there. Your show specifically, uh, you've got a few different things. The main one is a trifecta, I guess, of you, Ali Wong, and Sean Patton. What can people expect uh, heading to that show if they can make it to Montreal? Um, you can expect to see three comedians, <laughs> I think, is the main, main point of that show. Um, I think it was all, basically, I think it was done because of uh, it was scheduling. They, okay. they needed to put all three of us on the show. Uh, we couldn't maybe, didn't have enough stage time for everyone. Yeah, I mean, that should be fun. I, I know both of those guys. They're, they're great. Yeah, I don't know. I think everybody can just expect to have a good old Montreal fashion good time. You're also doing uh, the Talk of the Fest. Uh, there's a few of them this year. You're doing one hosted by uh, Jeremy Hotz, and that's with a number of comedians on your bill. Oh, yeah, that'll probably be fun. <laughs> it's kind of, you're kind of cooling me in on everything I'm doing. Oh. I, haven't really, I haven't really looked at any schedules or anything. Yeah, I've had to look so, at the schedules because uh, I'm, I'm heading down there, so I have to figure out what shows I'm actually going to try and see. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that starting is that started this week? It started this week. I'm not yeah. heading there until uh, the 23rd. Oh, okay, that's when I get there. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure, I mean, there's so much comedy that goes on in uh, in a festival like that, and I don't even know where to start. Are you planning on uh, watching any comedy while you're there as well as just performing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I always do. I mean, again, I haven't looked at any schedules, so I can't tell you what I'm interested in seeing. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it always turns into, uh, it's just a fun time, man. It's like, I mean, I was just talking to another guy about it, and it's like, yeah, it's like comedy camp. It's like all the, they get all your favorite people in one place for a week, and you get to hang out with all your friends and some of the funniest people on the planet. It's like, you know, you can't beat it. Awesome. And people, of course, can find information about you online. You have a website. Uh, you're you're on Twitter. Do you enjoy that side of things, the promotion, the getting your your name out, or do you at least try to have fun with it? Twitter again. That's another new thing in the last couple of years that's come up that I think is. Uh, I mean, that's helped a lot of comedians' careers too. I mean, there are a lot of. This is a pretty good time, I think, to be uh, to be doing doing this kind of stuff. I mean, between the podcast and Twitter, you know, there's so many avenues to get your sensibilities out there. Um, so I think it's it's easier to connect to find a fan base out there. And I uh, I enjoy I like Twitter. Yeah, I like tweeting. I like getting silly on there. As far as like other promotions, I mean, I mean, I guess I like promoting myself. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Showbizmonkeys.com.